All right, good evening, friends, and welcome back to the Quarantine Drinking Team series here on Bourbon Blog. We're coming at you on Facebook tonight. We've been doing Instagram. We put a lot of those videos up on YouTube for you to see, uh, but we're going to be doing Facebook and just making sure you guys see it on Facebook. And it's my good friend, Will, also known as Will Bourbon Swinson. Just trying to remind the world that for my, my middle name is Bourbon. It is. How did that happen? You know, my parents were just big drinkers and they just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I grew up Mormon. I didn't have a drink till I was like 30. But, <laughs> uh, but no, no, no. Uh, it just makes me feel good. I just, I changed it legally. That's not true either. I don't know why I've started out lying so much. <laughs> what kind of, it would be like WBS, right? It would, well, your name would be BS on the end. We, WBS. Yeah, so. my dad's name is Bob and we always make fun of him that his initials are Bob, are BS. <laughs> <laughs> Well, obviously, uh, we're so glad to have you coming to us from New York. And um, for those of you that know uh, Sabrina or the chilling adventures of Sabrina, he plays uh, Professor Carcosa. That's right. That turns into, you turn into? Uh, the pagan god Pan. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Very, Thank very. Cool. And um, wow, that's, I mean, I, I got into it right at the beginning and I, I, mean, I really enjoy it. It has a nice element of darkness and uh but also some good humor it's fun yeah they've got a good tone to it they, yeah. they it's silly and, fu and funny but it, but dark enough and kind of active and crazy enough yeah. Well. yeah what's it like where is it is it filmed in new york where's it where's it filmed it's shot in vancouver vancouver Canada. okay uh, vancouver is a great town because it can pass for everything it's got big city that kind of can pass for new york if you wanted to it's right on the yeah. ocean so they've got beaches and then it's British Columbia, so they've got like forests and mountains. It just can pass for everything. And yeah. then also Canada's got these great, you know, tax incentives to go shoot over there, and it makes things a lot cheaper, right? For uh, for film crews, there's like I think there's like 50 TV shows that shoot in Vancouver right now. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, we're coming, we're coming to uh, you know bringing you in as a as an actor and, and someone who's just done a ton on Broadway, but pretty serious time. I mean, I, it's um, we're gonna obviously. Why don't, we, why don't we both grab a drink as we talk about this? I think it's a pleasure. You know, we probably both need a drink here. All right, what are you starting uh, with? Want to grab the rye first? Uh, let's do a little yeah. rye first. Happy to. We have a little of the peerless rye, um, and this comes from my neck of the woods, Will. I think you tried this with me back when it was only two years old, and then I think I poured you some three years old last time I saw you. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I think you brought me some of this right after they started making this. Yes, yes. Right? Was it yes. 17? Yeah, it was a couple years ago. Yep. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. And so this is actually the four year. This is the uh this is the oldest uh peerless ride that you're probably gonna have had with me. Uh well oh, cheers and excited Thank to hear how you like it. Cheers. I, I have a feeling I will like it. I think you might. Is that nice? Yeah, man, it's like a carameled apple. Isn't it nice? It's a nice, there are some nice fruit notes, some nice caramel notes. It's only four and a half or so years old. It, to me, it tastes a lot older. Um, I'm really, I'm really a big fan of this. Um, oh yeah. It's like a spicy apple pie. I you see. may, you may have to, uh, you may have to start calling yourself uh, Will, Will Rye. You know, that's been my jam lately, Tom. <laughs> the rye, Evan? What are the rye's that you've been drinking? What are the rye's are you into? Uh, the Angel's Envy. And the Michters are my two go-tos. I'm just crazy about right. those. They're both really great. I remember a couple years ago, I think it was right after a, a, you did a, a Les Mis um, uh, production. You and I went to a, I think it was a pretty well-known liquor store in um, Manhattan together. And it was, um, you, I think you scored a couple of really good bottles of some Orphan Barrel or something. I mean, we found some really good ones, whatever liquor store. I think it was Weller, something. Oh, it might have been the Weller. That's what it was, right. I think that's what it was. Ninth, Ninth Avenue Vintners, I think, is where we went. That's what it was, right, right. That's a killer wine store. Yeah. Good, good sure. liquor store. Will and I have done some uh, some some whiskey shopping before and some whiskey drinking backstage. I, I, it's been fun hanging out with you, doing some videos back there. Oh, at, uh, you're like the best friend to have, because you call up, you say, I'm coming to town. I have I have whiskey. <laughs> whiskey. Whereabouts <laughs> are you? Will travel, so <laughs> your, your friendship always comes with a drink, and that's the that's the best kind of friendship. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's good to see. And, and Will and I have known each other for um for quite a while. We'll just briefly tell you we uh we met. Uh, you had a film that you had starred in and co-wrote, right? 
co-wrote and I directed it. Um, yeah. yeah, and and our friend Peter and I produced it together. I co-wrote it with Peter and and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you were producing a film festival, right? That's right. We were producing the film festival uh, Spud Fest in Driggs, Idaho. Yep. And uh, great film. If you get a chance, it's you can look for it out there called Sons of Provo. I still watch it sometimes, and it just makes me laugh. It's just, uh, <laughs> Very silly. But our buddy, our buddy Peter is actually watching tonight. He's drinking some some Peerless too. Shout out to Peter. Peter. Yeah, Peter's a whiskey. Every time I do a, uh, a a whiskey tasting in LA, man, he's there for all of them. And Peter is just such a great guy. And uh, great guy great, and a great palate. Yes, he has a great. He lo he really he loves some good whiskeys. He's yeah. a he's quite an enthusiast. But when you were doing Sons of Provo, we met, we stayed in touch, and um, you know, amazingly, we, we're coming to you at a time that uh, in Broadway. I mean, this is this is kind of crazy. I was in New York uh, the night before. Broadway shut down. I was there and I was texting you. I think hey, what I go to see you that night or was it the night before you went to a show the last night that Broadway was still open? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it, I went to see the uh, Jagged Little Pill it was fantastic. But I mean, this is, you know, tell us, tell us your story. What's been happening your way? What's been happening with Broadway? Tell us what's been going on. It's pretty nuts, man. Um, so obviously for you know a Broadway show to happen, you need a large group of people to get together. For any show to get together, you know, to happen, you need a crowd to come together. And that's right. just the only thing we can't do right now is get a crowd together. So not only is Broadway just shut down for the first time in history to this length, in, including never happened. strikes and, and disasters, it's the longest and will be the longest shutdown ever. So it'll be incredibly interesting to see how it recovers. But every theater across the country can't can't you know produce their stuff. So they're you know, it's a tough time for not just actors, but but for everyone in the business. You know, all the costumers and all the stagehands and all you know, right. and, and 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 also we're just hungry for the entertainment. So sure, it's tricky. I mean, I was involved in in a in a project that was going to open. Uh, this would have been our second week of shows this week. So we were in rehearsals, and you know, and then we just got the news that nope we're all shutting it all down so so we just went home and we're all kind of waiting hoping uh that it that it comes back um this particular show was a production of assassins which is a stephen sondheim musical which is fantastic wow it's about all of the people over the course of american history that have tried to assassinate a president and it's sort of this crazy um fever dream almost of them all being sort of in the same place at once and and sort of telling their stories and and it's bizarrely uh, prescient at, at this time, and it'll be really interesting to to do it again once once we reopen, because it feels like it was written this month. Um, <laughs> so that's crazy. I mean, what, what's also crazy is like I'm starting to get emails from shows that I've been sort of involved with in development, and everyone wants to get back to work, right? Right. So right now, the theater league is thinking, you know, let's start planning for the fall. Hopefully, that you know that can work. So everybody's thinking, all right, we'll maybe start rehearsing things in August and see if we can get Broadway back going back by Labor Day, which seems like a long time, but it also seems like, you know, maybe we can pull that off. But every show wants to start up at the same time. So like four different shows that I've been working on a development are like, so we're going to start in August, we're going to do it in September. But, you, you know, obviously you can't be in four places at once. So it'll be interesting to see how people schedule things and what shows have to hold back to allow room in the theaters because it's just it, it'll be a, a, a wild organizational right beat right it's crazy and it's depressing man it's just uh it's it's tough to not be able to plug yourself in to to your work yeah it's a lot it's a lot of people out of work i mean broadway um and and theater it, just everything in new york i mean there's it must employ a, a large number of people to be out of work right now a ton of people a ton and it's it's Tourism is the number one Broadway, you know, really being a main tourist attraction for New York is the number one moneymaker for New York City. So for it to just sit dormant for six months, it'll be it'll be really scary and sad to see how many shows die and how many people aren't able to come back to work and and uh, and and how many people won't be able to make rent and and and, you know, insurance payments. And and, you know, right now, luckily, there are good kind of grassroots organizing going on to try to put things in place oh, put, put you know fundraising in place the, the right. biggest kind of uh 
and most visible fundraising for the the Broadway community is is a great organization called the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund. Uh huh. And if you go to actorsfund.org, um, they have donation pages and and um and it goes to not just actors who are out of work, but you know people who are you know hurting really. Right. Who are in the hospital on ventilators and not being able to pay their you know medical bills? So, yeah, that's a great organization. There's a, there's a whole handful of them. But like you know when you go to a Broadway show and they and and then they make a speech after curtain call and they mm -hmm. ask for donations in the red buckets, that's that goes to the Actors Fund largely and the, the larger balloon companies called Broadway Cares Equity Fund. That's the way we can we can help out right now. Just going to again that website again is uh, ActorsFund.org actorsfund.org and uh, so important to help the actors out and um well you i mean you've had some when it comes to this whole uh COVID thing you've had a little bit of a personal experience yeah you know i'm not i'm not i'm not uh sure that i i didn't have it um we're pretty sure that our house has had it um they're they're saying that many people's symptoms are are lighter and if i indeed had it then i got off really lucky because yeah. i just had about a 10 day crazy headache that that wouldn't go away and a fever that went up and down and i was just super weary just like no energy and, and that's nothing like you felt before then yeah yeah it, if it was like a it was like a flu but it was you know very different from anything i'd ever had before my wife and stepdaughter uh also have had it had it pretty rough and, and much worse symptoms than me and uh my my stepdaughter's had the cough and 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 the fever and and um so we've been kind of sequestering in our rooms and wearing a lot of face masks and cleaning everything all day long. I'm so tired of cleaning. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're not um, convinced that we haven't had it in our family. Um, we also have good friends that are struggling for their lives right now. And we've also wow. lost a good friend. Um, it's oh, a really real thing. Um, so for the people that are watching across the country and it hasn't really hit your city yet, I would say, Take it seriously, because right now in New York, it's sort of peaking and cresting, and um, and it you know it's it's a selective virus. It seems like it seems like it just is picking and choosing who it decides to hit hard. And uh, you know we we've got a good friend who who's been on a respirator for weeks now, and and was an otherwise incredibly healthy thirty something year old friend guy, just really strong, super talented Broadway actor. And uh, and we're just you know saying prayers for him right now. So wow. so if, if if someone was to ask my advice, I would say take it seriously. If you're in a town where it doesn't seem to be hitting right now, and you think this is nothing, and I'm just going to go out anyway, uh, my advice is it's it's not about you. It's about spreading it to other people because like what my doctor said is you may well have it, Will, but if you go out there, you could be carrying it and spread it to somebody, an elderly person or a person with a pre-existing condition that could absolutely be more vulnerable than you and you could give right. it to you're fine but you could you could you know absolutely threaten the life of somebody else by going out there so so it's not about you know i want to get out there and it's my right to get out there it's just about you know caring for people who may be more vulnerable than me wow well we're glad it sounds like everyone at your house is is doing better at the moment or knock on wood knock on wood we're doing a lot better good. out of the woods you're to keep your uh your friends and uh in the theater business and everyone in our thoughts and prayers and you know certainly sorry it's it, this is such a crazy time where it's uh, it's affecting so many businesses and and when we did here as i was leaving new york when i heard um broadway was being um closed down i was like you know first of all wow i was just at a show last night <laughs> then i was thinking well i'm glad i went to a show because it may be a while before i see one again yeah. um but uh, so we, if you do have any questions for will swenson Ask them down below or tweet back to us, uh, whether you're watching on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, we did get a question on um, on Facebook from, let's push this up here, Brad saying, anything Broadway you suggest we can watch through streaming services? Anything that you, uh, it would give us that Broadway feel that uh, that's streaming. Yeah, yeah, they have been doing cool things. I'd say check the Broadway websites because they're constantly kind of saying, oh, tonight you can stream such and such. Um, one that I just discovered is that the Old Globe in London that does the Shakespeare plays and is a building that's completely a replica of Shakespeare's Globe um, just made, I don't know, hundreds maybe of their plays accessible for just like, uh, you know, like five pounds or whatever that'd be in dollar. I mean, right. 
that's like yeah. the best Shakespeare you'll ever see in your life. And then it's not only Shakespeare, but um, the best classical theater you might ever see um, just for a tiny bit of money. Um, but there are Broadway things as well. And there are so many uh, like streaming fundraisers as well. Like if you wanna see uh, all the greatest Broadway uh, actors, um, just tune in like Seth Rudetsky who runs the Broadway channel on Sirius XM. He's kind of the host of, of most of that programming. He and his husband, James, have been doing two shows a day streaming. It's called Stars in the House. I think that's wow. a website, is starsinthehouse.com. Yeah. They do show at two o'clock and at eight o'clock, and they're doing like reunions of every show. So basically they'll round up the entire cast of a show and he'll like, it's like a talk show. He'll, they'll like interview them and then everyone will do a song or two or three um, from, their, from their living rooms. Everyone's playing the guitar and, and playing the piano or doing it to pre-recorded tracks and they're singing along together. It's, it's absolutely uh, worth tuning into. Super entertaining and super, you know, original stuff that you wouldn't get otherwise. That's cool. No, that's good. Yeah. So, so you, we probably will be seeing more and more of that kind of thing. I mean, just new new ways to uh, to spread that kind of Broadway and that film and or that that through film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I imagine talk shows like you and I are doing right now are popping up like crazy because it's the only way to do it. Right? <laughs> no, we can't we can't come see you backstage. What what have you been uh, watching since you've been uh, since you've been back home that you're enjoying? You know you, uh, that you discovered comedy stuff i haven't been watching a lot of new stuff um i've just needed to laugh man because life has been pretty pretty tough so right. i've been re-watching do you know the comedian mike berbiglia yes yes oh my gosh he's amazing anyway i i've watched i think all of his specials again and my wife and i have been watching uh, arrested development on a loop just just so we can laugh that's the main thing we've been getting to humor, and, humor is really important I've also been watching this show on HBO called My Brilliant Friend. It's this Italian show. I've been trying to learn Italian, um, and uh, and I don't understand hardly a word of this show because they're speaking in a dialect and they're speaking so quickly. But it's this beautiful show. It feels very much like like The Godfather visually, but but um, it's more like a Gabriel Garcia Marquez novel in its story, just sort of strung out over time and law and families intermingle. Anyway, I, I recommend that one. I like that one a lot. Cool, cool, nice. What do you th what do you think of the rye? We'll talk. We'll talk. Someone asks is asking about the whiskeys. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. As you're with drinking it. more of it. You're. you're, uh, you're going we, we didn't move on, and we just stayed on this one. No, it's good. Show, show me the glass you're drinking. I like that. That's kind of cool. Does it have kind of a kind of a gold down the bottom? It's a copper bottom. Well, copper bottom. Here was my seventh anniversary with my wife, which is oh, nice. anniversary. So she got me these tumblers, and I'm crazy about them. I like it. I like yeah. It. They came with a, a, a carafe as well. It are, is very pretty. Yeah, I like it. Very nice. Oh my gosh! How long you been married, Tom? Uh, let me think for about eight years. We, we Will and I share a, a wedding anniversary date, which is pretty amazing. Yep. So, did you get married yep. in 2011? 2012. So just right. You got married on the exact same day. Was was it? Were you 2012 too? Yes. That's crazy. oh my gosh. We got married on the exact same it's day. So wild! That is so wild. October sixth. <laughs> well, I mean, if you ever do, hey, if you ever do a, a, a vow renewal, you know, we maybe we'll maybe we'll do it at a distillery. Yeah, we'll do a double double vow renewal at a, at a distillery. <laughs> you were planning, Tom, this spring I was planning like on my break to come out and and do like a bourbon trail. I, I told, I contacted you about it. Yeah, you were going to come and, and look at uh, the distilleries in Kentucky to the bourbon trail. We were going to show you around some. Yeah. We're gonna. We're still gonna do it. May just be a little bit. Yeah, uh, on the list. It's just it was supposed to be like this spring. And yeah, uh, that's right. I remember this now. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you may want to look at, of course, uh, Kentucky Derby being moved to um, September. Uh, right. It's usually the big exciting time for us. Sure. Um, in well, all year, but obviously we have so many great people coming. Yeah. Uh, for parties and galas and uh, and just to be at the track. Um, yeah. During the first week of well, last couple of weeks of April, first week of May, but that'll be in September. So you might look at September. Who knows? It might be a good sure, man. If we can get going by then, that'd be fantastic. That would be really nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough to know what it will be like. Um, right. Many distilleries, of course, still still making whiskey, and many distilleries have just uh, shifted their focus completely to um, making hand sanitizers, which is um, That's awesome. really, you know they had the alcohol, they're right. putting together the hand sanitizers. Um, yeah. So that's. Um, that's really important. Have you have you been to any distilleries in New York or 
anywhere? Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, been. What, to, what, have you, what have you been to that you like? I've been to Kings County, which actually we I have right here. All right, we we have some Kings. We're both Kings County fans, so why don't we grab? Which one do you have? Uh, just the bourbon, the straight bourbon. Oh, let's do a little bourbon. Let's let's do some bourbon. Great. Yeah, I was just well. I was just there the last time I was uh, in New York. I love that place. Yeah, it's a great bourbon. The coolest. I don't know if you saw it when you were in the gift shop. They make like a little sampler gift box. Yes. They, they sell them in flasks, but they have a smaller size than this, and you can kind of choose what you want as your sampler. And in the smaller bottles, and I think there's four in a little case, a little wooden case, and you can get like their chocolate bourbon, and then the straight bourbon, and whatever else they have. I can't. I can't remember all the all the. Right. right, the chocolate. They have the peated. They have, and they have some experiments too. They're just really a lot of fun. Yep, yep. But like yeah. the best gift, like I was thinking, I want to buy like twelve of these just to give as presents because it was so cool. Just the bottles are so cool, and the case was so cool, and then there was selection instead of just giving one, one right. taste of something. You're giving four tastes of something. You get you get kind of a nice little sampling. And uh, right. you've been to the have you been to the gatehouses where they have the bar? At the uh, the front of the naval yard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really so it's you know great experience. Everything's yep. uh, their uh, local New York products. They're making those cocktails with. It's just a yep. new place. They're actually celebrating. Get this. They're celebrating their ten year anniversary this week. Some like really. Week. Yeah. So that I, will be their, uh, I discovered them by accident. I was shooting a movie. Um, there's a huge movie studio right next door to the navy yard. And I had to go in in the morning for a costume fitting and I wasn't supposed to do anything else until like nine o'clock that night. So I literally had like 10 hours free. I could either go all the way back home, which is like an hour and a half to two hours with traffic, depending on when you're traveling, because it's New York. Right. I was like, I'm not going to spend three hours on the train just so I can sit at home for three hours. Anyway, so uh, I just was like messing around on Google. I was like, I wonder if there are any good bars around here. And the closest thing was the Kings County Distillery. Well, the closest uh, <laughs> over there and discovered it and had like a tasting and had lunch. And uh, and that's how I got to, to know that. Fantastic stuff. It just, yeah. and it's, and people love it in New York and they love it everywhere. But we take this, well, let's try a little sip. If you guys have had Kings County, tell us down below what you like about it. I'm just uh, a big fan of the, um, Oh, well, the expression of bourbon this is. I mean, this is, um, it's called New York City's oldest distillery for a reason because mm -hmm. it's the oldest distillery since uh, Prohibition that's been in the city of New York. So um, huh. this is actually aged less than four years. And to me, it's, um, again, it tastes a lot older. There's a lot of depth to this. It was super weedy, yeah? Mm -hmm. Some nice barrel to some really great notes. Um, Hey, here's a here's a name you might know. Someone who's who's watching right now. I will pop this up. Will John Moyer? Hey, John. John's watching. He says he's asking High West Distillery in Utah to make some singles award whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> you think that might happen? I don't know if it would sell much, John. <laughs> but it's a good thought. It's totally a good thought. <laughs> That was a, that was a film you read. When, when, when was the when was Singles Ward? Singles Ward was two thousand. We shot it in two thousand one, and I think we right. released it in two thousand two. I was actually shooting wow. that film on nine eleven. Like that happened. Wow. My memory of of nine eleven. I wasn't home in New York. I'd flown out the day before, and I was uh, I was in Salt Lake City the morning of nine eleven shooting <laughs> shooting that movie. Gosh. John says you'd be surprised how many people might uh, <laughs> might like that one. I hear, I hear New York, I hear uh, Utah rather is is coming along. And high, yeah. if the West is any indication of uh, people's appreciation for the spirits in, in Utah, then, then it's encouraging. Oh, it really is. They're doing, they're doing some great stuff. And uh, uh, John, we're glad to have you watching. We're glad to have all of you watching. If any of you have any questions uh, watching on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, definitely ask them below. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be sipping whiskey with, uh, with my good friend Will Swinson here. Uh, Will has some... Um, other projects that um, as soon as this whole thing ends, you have some other Netflix projects that you're working on? Yeah, I just finished shooting another show for Netflix. Um, it's called Hit and Run. It's kind of a, a homelandy feel. It's very action-y. I didn't get to do any of the action. I play kind of a boring lawyer husband. But um, but cool show. A lot of it takes place in uh, Israel and a lot, and the rest of it in New York. I didn't get to go to Israel because my storyline didn't go over there. 
<laughs> but I hear Tel Aviv is awesome. I'd love to go to Tel Aviv. I've, I've heard that too. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I just finished shooting that. And, uh, and like I said, I was in rehearsals for this show assassins and, uh, and then a few other shows in development. And as an actor, you know, you're always trying to put your finger in as many pies as you can and right. iron in the fire, so to speak. So that when, you know, when you suddenly are unemployed, you can go, Oh, this one, you know, and then you, you stay employed, hopefully, <laughs> but, you know, what, what are your kind of like your favorite kind of roles to play? I mean, you've done a variety of roles um, in so many things you've done. Yeah. I mean, uh, bad guys in general, but, but not just bad guys, but just complex characters, you know, just people that have more than one thing going on. Often it's pretty boring to be the leading man and just sort of, I love you. You love me. I can't be with you, but I want to. And, and, you know, if that's the only hurdle to get over in the show, then, then, you know, that's not as much fun as, as somebody as complex as, as, um, you know, usually a bad guy, like Javert and Les Mis, he, he was right. he's not, he's not just a mustache twisting bad guy. He's, you know, he feels like he's right. And he's, he's he thinks he's working in God's um, instruction and, and finally discovers that he was kind of the bad guy all along. You know, just, there's, there's just a lot more to work with, a lot more to chew on. Was Javert, was that a part that you had always wanted to play? Absolutely. I, yeah. I, was crazy about Les Mis from the time it came out. I think I was 10 years old, 12 years old or something. Just obsessed with it and just, you know, knew every word and wanted to be on the barricade so bad. And I auditioned for that show so many times, Tom. And then, you know, like revival number three or something, I finally got Javert and it was amazing. But now, yeah, that was a ball. That's awesome. That's cool. <laughs> you kept after it and, it and it finally worked out. Finally, finally. But it was, it was amazing. That was a great part. My dad lost his mind. Like my dad's not a huge, you know, theater guy, um, but uh, but he loved Les Mis. My dad loves Les Mis and Neil Diamond, and that's basically his his musical <laughs> uh, bubble. And uh, and when I got Les Mis, he he just died and went to heaven. I, I brought him out for opening night, and he met Colm Wilkinson, who was the original Jean Valjean, and. I mean, my dad's got a story to tell for the rest of his life. He just, he was like, I could die and die happy tonight. I'm great. So <laughs> I'm very, very happy about the late miss thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Any other parts that you, um, that you hope to play someday that it would be like the ultimate role that, uh, that you haven't gotten to yet? Yeah. I mean, every actor's got a little bit of a list. I mean, if, if I'm honest, the stuff that really jazzes me is is something that hasn't been written yet like my favorite thing to do is create a new part because when when you're doing a role that's been done before there are you know somebody's already done it and obviously done it well enough that this show's getting done again so there's these ideas out there of how it should be done you know if you do Sweeney Todd you're you, there's ideas about how to do it if you do Javert there's certain ideas about how it's done so it's harder to sort of reinvent and make it truly your own that sounds a little artsy fartsy but but um, so when something's brand new and you're creating it, that just feels like the most fulfilling. You just like you don't. There's no constraints about about preconceptions. So I dig I dig new stuff. That being said, <laughs> um, yeah, I would. The one that really stands out is Sweeney Todd. I would love to do Sweeney Todd someday. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, hopefully. Well, the the uh, I was gonna say the complexity. Um, you know, you like complex characters. The playing, I, I I like complex whiskey. I think there's a they go a, it's a lot. It's a lot more fun than a, than a single faceted whiskey. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You only got one thing going on. You move on to the next whiskey. You like the roller coaster of flavors, much like the uh, roller coaster of uh, a personality. And I think the ones we've uh, we've just had definitely um, definitely showcase that both in the pure King uh, County bourbon is the Javert of whiskeys. It's the Javert, yeah, and it's uh, it's something that I think I've seen that you have in your. Uh, your dressing room sometimes. I right? had a bottle of that in my dressing room, probably thanks yeah. to you. I think you probably brought that. <laughs> I brought you. I was doing like this. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Again, for those of you just joining us, it's actor Will Swinson. We are live here on our quarantine drinking team series, doing this every night of the quarantine, even if this goes for like, which I hope it won't, Will. Even if this goes for months, I'm going to have somebody new to chat with every night. Oh, your poor liver. How are you going <laughs> to... <laughs> It's just giving us a good excuse to chat with great people and have a nice drink, you know. That's <laughs> what we're going on. Um, 
Hopefully you have a good excuse to have like a whiskey every night too. For sure, for sure. I mean, uh, it, it's been a nice uh, thing. Not, not that the quarantine is a nice thing, but something that has come about because of it, at least for me and, and a few people that I've spoken with, is that I've been connecting with people that I normally wouldn't get the chance to connect with because um, we all just have a little bit of extra time in our day. And, uh, and because social media like this has become a little more uh, prevalent and accessible right now, Right. I've, I've been able to to just ring up some friends and, and have a drink, you know, <laughs> and we drink with them. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, you know, it, with life and with kids and shows and, and work, you, you don't have that time to, to get to hang out with all the friends that you'd like to. But but we, we've been able to do, you know, some FaceTime chats with friends that we normally don't get to connect with. Right. Had a drink with my friend who lives in Portugal the other day, and and uh, and my you know my pal who lives in Washington the other night, and uh, and it's just it's nice. It, 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 we all because we all get to sort of unload our baggage and kind of go, oh, you're going through this too. I'm going through this too. Have a drink together. It's very nice. You think we'll be using those uh, those mediums uh, more and more as 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 this whole thing ends? I mean, I Facebook drinks. Happy hours on Zoom. You think we'll see more? That we wouldn't. I mean, there have already been some pretty cool creative things that have come out of it. Yeah. Like on platforms like this where you can get, you know, like on Zoom meetings where you can get 20 people up at the same time. You know, some people are, are harmonizing songs and singing different parts and, and just finding the creativity within the format. That's that's kind of a really cool thing. It's It'll weird. be interesting to see, you know, artistically what happens with, with theater um, because of this virus, you know, is... Are we going to, you know, we don't know enough right now. So you, you could what if all day long, but if this is a virus that continues to resurface, are we going to be able to, to show up in large groups? Are we going to have to prove that we have the antibodies? Um, are we going to start oh, we'll take, yeah. everything that's being written right now with a cast of three people in mind instead of a cast of 40 in mind so that it it's be being produced because you could put three people on a stage, you know, uh, or three people on a movie set and and feasibly you know work with a, a crew of like 10 and if you kept your distance and maybe wore mask you could probably still shoot a film i don't know i don't know enough about it but it's it's sure. interesting to think about what could or might happen because of it the scenarios that you've thought of will as you're as you're thinking about you know whenever this whenever you can go back to being on stage do you imagine that a lot of people will still be wearing masks in in a theater, do you? I mean, what what do you picture? What would it look like? I have no idea. Um, did I just go away? I clicked something, and now I'm. I can still see you. Can looking at the wrong thing. There's a little bit of a delay. Yeah, I can still right. see you. Can you see me? Yeah, I'm good. All right, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> we did have another question from Frank here, who says, "Most complex whiskey he ever had was Joseph Magnus. How about yours? What was the most complex whiskey?" Uh, Oh, you ever had? Um, I'm probably gonna say it's a Scotch whiskey. Um, yeah. But last year, my wife gave me a, a Balvenie. Uh, I think it's called the Tune. T U N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do the, their their master distiller does like a, a special one every year where he kind of picks from this barrel and this barrel and and puts together his own special thing and then they send it to you with. With the tasting notes of each barrel that went into his concoction, and they come with numbers. I can't remember at the time the number uh, of the bottle that she gave me, but but um, but it was it was focused, but at the same time had a hundred things going on. It just wow, I'm crazy about spicy and big, and right. it, was just, it just kept going, and it was like oh, there's a different note, and that's sweet, and that's cinnamon, and that's it just kept. Kept going, and that—that's a bottle that I'm just like eking out. I'm just oh, special occasion. <laughs> that's mine. How about you? Uh, great question. So I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at part of my collection. You know, I think it's it would probably have to be a really old whiskey. I mean, some of the really really old whiskeys that are 20 plus may have too much extraction, but I love whiskeys that are in the 15, 18 category. Um, Probably something that would be a wine barrel aged uh, whiskey. So, you know, we're big fans of, um, I'll tell you one of the best, I, one of my favorite wine barrel aged is the uh, Whistle Pig 12 that had the, the old world cast finish. Uh, it has the Sauternes, the mm -hmm. Port, the Madeira. 
Yeah, I think that's one that you can find that's a little easier to find than some that has a lot of layers. Uh, just those extra barrels that they finish them in that allow that the the love of that wine to get on them. Uh -huh. but, you know, I'm, I think it all depends. I mean, I think that, um, um, of course, what we started with, the Peerless, uh, has does have a variety of great notes, just like the uh, the King's County. Um, and I think you and I have had, I'm sure you've had it. I, I might have brought it to you before, the Jefferson's Ocean that's been finished on the back of a ship, which, um, have you had the ocean? Did I've never had, had it. I've, I've uh, oh. seen it and I've heard it talked about and I still have never had a taste of it. Yeah, the voyages are all so different because the the barrels are in the back of a ship and they rock around and they. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually just talked with founder Trey Zoller this time last week, and it's um, someone says uh, Jefferson's Groth. If they're a big fan of the Jefferson's Groth as well. Oh, that's Peter. Peter, we're we're hearing from Peter now. There's <laughs> Peter. Hey, Jefferson's Groth. That's he likes it. He, I think we Peter and I had a little of that back in the day. Um, yeah. But uh, I believe Peter, you're you're having some of the Peerless. I talked to Peter earlier, and he's he was having a little of the uh, the Peerless whiskey with us. What, uh, do you you have the uh, you have the Peerless bourbon? I do. Should we should we uh, should we go on? on? Peerless bourbon. Yes, let. And I think I, I just saw someone ask if if um, if we gave you enough whiskeys if you would if you would sing. But I don't know if you're feeling up to it. If I would sing. Yeah, if we if we gave you enough whiskey, someone asked if you would sing. <laughs> I don't have my guitar. I left my guitar. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay, maybe we'll. <laughs> Next time we'll make sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had the Peerless Bourbon before. This is my first on this. Gonna be your first time. Okay, great. So this one will was um, one that had not been released by the distillery for about. Uh, over 100 years, 102 years. And the distillery was pre-prohibition, went by the wayside with prohibition like most other distilleries did, thousands of them in the country. And um, the family just brought it back about five years ago. So this bourbon is uh, the small batch peerless bourbon. It is barrel proof, just like the rye. Oh, it is a sweet, sweet mash fermentation, um, which is one of the only distilleries that does the sweet mash fermentation. And uh, there's no water added. It is uh, non-show filtered, and um, it's beautiful. Let's let's see what you think. Did you already have a sip? Tell me, well, as we drink it, tell me yeah. more about the sweet mash because it's 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 really hard to do, right? Right, right, right. Because uh, whereas most distilleries will have a sour mash and keep some of that mash around from the last fermentation they do, Peerless uh, does a new mash every time cleans those fermenters and it just allows the whiskey to, um, uh, from what they say, I mean, from, from their recipe and what their approach is to have a whole different flavor, it's more expensive, it's more time consuming. And um, yeah, yeah. and of course, I mean, the sour mash is another way to do it. It's what the way most distilleries yeah. do it. Um, oh they God. also enter the whiskey at a lower proof into the barrel. Uh -huh. Most distilleries, understandably big distilleries, and I see uh, Cheers, Peerless is watching us right there. Uh, bigger distilleries are trying to do large productions and they enter the barrel at around 120 proof when it's that clear white dog. Peerless puts it in the barrel around 108, 109 proof, uh -huh. putting it in the barrel at that proof, and then they take it around at the same proof or so, 108, 109. What do you think? I'm crazy about it. It tastes like, uh, like, like cinnamon red hots, like hot tamales candy. Yes, a lot of good cinnamon flavor. A lot of good spice. Um, yeah. Really beautiful. Mm hmm. A lot of good spice, like clove. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm 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 all about spice and pepper, and this. this you get a little clove too. You said. Yep. Clove. I get that too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nice clove. Um, really. Um, the spice is just kind of dance. Again, it's kind of like the complex characters. It's that that roller coaster of uh, oh, of flavors on your tongue. Yep. Yep. Well done, peerless. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite cocktail you like to do with uh, whiskey? Is anything that you ever experiment with cocktails or just a cocktail you like to have made? I do. I, do. I mean, as far as bourbon goes, I'm I'm a sucker for a, just a whiskey sour. I, I love a whiskey sour. Um, but the fun one that I've been making lately, my wife is crazy about spicy margaritas. And for Christmas, I got this infuser. So I've been infusing tequila with jalapenos and just getting, a, getting the tequila nice and spicy. 
and then making a like a you know like a chili powder rim and and spicy tequila and then uh, some agave and some lime or lemon. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's so good. We're making a lot of those. And you really get that spice. That spice really comes forward. Oh my gosh, jalapenos especially. I've been trying different infusing things. I did raspberry the other night with tequila, which you'd think might be a weird combo, but it was pretty great. It just like mellowed out the tequila, and it was just a nice sipping tequila with an ice cube. Super yummy. This is, it, we've been having some fun experimenting with cocktails too, as we've been in. I think that a lot of people are, are uh, creating more and more, getting more and more creative. I mean, we no, all, I'm getting to be a better cook and a better bartender, Tom. <laughs> Do you, ever, do you ever infuse any whiskey or any spirits in your food? I have, I have. I did a I did a bourbon recently. Um, I took this the Uncle Nearest uh, yeah. bourbon that my wife yeah. gave me a bottle of for, for Christmas, and I put some cloves and some cinnamon sticks in the infuser and uh, just made it sort of a Christmassy, much more kind of smoky Christmassy bourbon. Oh, it was so good, super yummy. Wow, you have that bottle close by too. I do have Uncle Nearest. Oh, yeah, that is nice. I think I have someone one someplace in my collection. Very that is nice. really nice stuff too. I think that their claim to fame is that the, they're the first African American uh, made uh, bourbon. Right there, there is a story about. Uh, I think Uncle Nearest was um, the gentleman that taught Jack Daniels how to make uh, whiskey. That's it's right. An homage to. Um, That's right. To Uncle Nearest, and it is uh, really nice stuff. It's so it's so amazing to see um, so many new brands popping up. Well, you said when you first um, when you first tried whiskey or. What was the first alcoholic beverage you had? I mean, a little of um, It was with Peter Brown, who's watching. <laughs> and it was a, it was a raspberry, um, um, like port wine, like a, like yeah. a, like a. Why am I spacing the word for like a, a dessert wine? Like a dessert wine, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, but there's a word for it. Peter's going to be very disappointed in me. Um, so that was the first thing, and so sweet was kind of my window into into drinking. And I started with wine and kind of went into like Zinfandels from there because they were the sweetest and then and then discovered the world of wine and its many, you know, permutations and varietals and uh, and had no idea that that whiskeys had as much uh, variety and, and difference of flavor and, and art to the making of them as wine does. Right. So eventually kind of moved into into whiskey. And as a side note. This possibly is why I, I've become much more of a bourbon and a whiskey guy. But um, wine, I'm a singer by profession. Usually I'm in a musical and wine dries out my singing voice. It dries it out. And if I drink a, a lot of wine the night before, I wake up ugh, very, very kind of dry and gross. But whiskey doesn't affect me nearly in the same way. So it's a much safer alcoholic drink for me to have. That being said also, if I'm in a big musical, I'm basically not drinking much at all. <laughs> But whiskey, that, that, but whiskey doesn't affect my singing voice as much as wine or beer does. Wine can it's it's those tannins, it's those it's that other that can get that astringent thing that's yeah. happened to the throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whiskey's all right. And if you're on the like the keto diet with no carbs, then uh, then you know whiskey doesn't have carbs, only calories. <laughs> <laughs> There's a musical, um, or is it a play? I think you were telling me about because I was looking that night at what I was going to see. Is it um, someone does several shots of whiskey and then does Shakespeare? Is that what it is? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a show. There's an off Broadway show called Drunk Shakespeare, and um, so what they do is like. There's a group of people and they all know a Shakespeare play and say the cast is like five or six people. Of those six people, um, they rotate, but for show number one of the week, actor John gets right. drunk. <laughs> um, and you know they, they start the show with him taking a few shots and then as they go along, they keep him very uh, imbibed. And, and then they do the show and it's just sort of, hilarious to watch this this you know normally very well trained classical actor try to recall Shakespeare which is like the hardest thing to do when you're stone cold sober um, and it, it, it and the audience drinks as well so it's just like it's a very silly funny thing to do and then on the second night you know actor number two does it so that you're not getting hammered every night if you're in the <laughs> a tag team basically yes 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 but um but it, it, it's a it's a it's a lot of fun have you ever um, have you ever gone on stage? I mean, with uh, I mean, maybe not since you've been doing Broadway, but have you ever just maybe had a little too much 
whiskey ever just warming up and gone on and performed anything? And how has it, how has it affected your performance? Um, well, I'll tell you this. When I was doing hair, um, we were supposed to be these crazy hippies. Um, and, <laughs> and we made our way to Broadway. And on opening night, a couple of the original cast members of hair came. And these were like authentic hippies from the 60s. And they came in and they 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 told us these stories. They were like, oh yeah, at, at an hour of the show, we'd drop acid. And then at a half hour, we'd do a line of Coke. And then at 10 minutes to show, we'd smoke a little weed just to take the edge off and then we'd do the show. And <laughs> and as I've talked to people over the years, this is true, but they also said like the show was, was at times incomprehensible and crazy and, and sometimes terrible because the cast was high. And part of the draw of the original cast of Hair was to go see actual hippies because it was the movement that was happening at the moment, happening at the moment. So people were going to see actual hippies doing crazy stuff on stage on Broadway while completely stoned out of their minds. <laughs> well, that sold tickets back then. But then we were the revival cast trying to recreate something and tell a, an authentic story. And so they told us these stories and we were like, oh, are we not crazy enough? Are we? Because we're like sipping our tea and trying to keep our voices in check so that we can sing right. So there, early on, there were a couple of nights where we we're like, we're not crazy enough. So at intermission, um, one night, we were like, we should take some shots and do this because second act is easy. And so we had a couple of shots of tequila and went on. And, did the, and my brain was just panicked. All I could do was panic. I went into complete, <laughs> just, just panic mode. And... And the show came out fine, I imagine. I said all my words and m maybe I looked like a fool. But that uh, feeling of being not at my best mentally on stage in front of a thousand people was so terrifying that I've never, never done it since. I, I just, I can't, I can't do it. So usually you, you, would, you would wait till afterwards to have the, the whiskey. Absolutely, whiskey. absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, unless like when I was in Waitress, um, I, I finished the show and then I had a half an hour, 45 minutes before a curtain call. So sometimes I could have a drink before a curtain call and, and it wouldn't matter if I felt lovely at curtain call. Right. <laughs> uh, I think someone is that someone asked below, does, does whiskey ever could a whiskey ever help the performance? I guess it could for some people. right? I imagine it could. I mean, I've spoken with actors that that, um, that <laughs> think it makes thinks that it makes them better. Um, I think that it can relax the voice a little bit. Um, certainly not to an extreme. Um, I'd say on film, there's a chance of of it altering your performance to a more believable state. Like if you're playing a crazy drunk scene, um, it, if you have the time and the and the resources in the film uh, to to try to capture stuff on film that that where the actor is actually a little bit lit, then you know that's a possibility. Um, if you're actually looking for that um, that as part of the part of the story, yeah, authenticity, sure, sure. Right. But that's uh, that's such a controllable medium, right? Um, if if they just look stupid and and lush and they can't remember their their lines and it's not contributing to the story that you're trying to tell, then you know right. throw that take out and you go come back the next day and and shoot it sober and and try to try to act <laughs> right and i'm sure that if you're actually trying to do a, a scene where you are um where you're playing slightly drunk or buzzed i mean actually figuring out a way to get yourself in that mental state would be um would kind of be right, a, right. yeah but it's tricky because you got to consider the character as well like like uh i did a play a great eugene o'neill play called moon for the misbegotten and the character um jamie is is a complete alcoholic and and uh and you know uh, an alcoholic who's who's drunk is is a much different behavior than than you know someone who's not used to drinking very much would behave as a drunk. Right. Um, so you know, there's just all that kind of psychology to consider. Uh, you know, uh, this particular character is drunk every night of his life and has been for years, and and uh, and just has learned how to sort of keep a lid on it. And and while his behaviors are are sometimes terrible, you know, you wouldn't necessarily clock that he's drunk at the moment and, yeah. and there's something really scary and awful about that. So it depends on, you know, the emotions that you're trying to convey to the audience and, and the story that you're trying to tell. It just depends. It's all specific, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. 
good questions were getting asked down below. And of course we should say, I mean, even though it's fun to talk about having fun, we do encourage responsible uh, drinking and- um, <laughs> <laughs> the acting profession. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend uh, irresponsible drinking and, and celebrations. Now, Peter. Peter did actually. I'll go back to the comments. He did want to remind you the type of um, wine, or I think it was beer. Maybe you had it was uh, the framboise. Framboise. That's what a framboise. The uh, for another French term for us yep. here. I knew it. Sorry, Peter. Sorry, a framboise. That was the very first alcoholic drink I ever had. That was the first one, and then we uh, the first. Whiskey? Did you say the first whiskey that you had that you could remember? I'm trying to remember the first whiskey that I ever had. I can't, I can't place it. It's all right. It's all right. And then we also heard from another good friend of ours from um, from Spudfest, Amy Rowell, who was uh, one of our producers or the producer at Spudfest, was Hi, Amy. watching and saying, "Did you guys?" And we—that's when we did first meet was uh, was Spudfest. Yep. Yeah. In fact, I think I still have. Um, the Sons of Provo uh, soundtrack, where you guys uh, autograph for me, saying you should join our group. You have a wicked golden voice, or something. Like that. <laughs> That's an autograph. A poor forgotten member of Everclean. <laughs> it's just speaking, though. It's not singing like Will can do. Uh, but uh, we had a whole lot of fun with that with uh, Don Wells and the gang there. Uh, but what you? I think you have some. Um, we tried the. Of course, we tried both the Peerless Bourbon and the Rye. Uh, did you have a favorite between those two, or did you? Uh, what, what, um, what? I'm crazy about both of them, but honestly, yeah. the the bourbon whiskey just lit a little happy fire in in my belly. Nice. I guess it's the cinnamon. Um, that it felt like I was little red hots. Just yeah. It is. I I agree. It's very nice stuff. Um, very nice. And both uh, as as you as you all are wherever you're watching from, be be looking at your. Uh, Local liquor stores, whether they're delivering, look for those to order online. You know, we want to make sure people can enjoy some good spirits as they're at home more. I think you said that you had some sort of an Asian whiskey. Oh, yeah, I do. I, do. Grab, I think I'm Asian whiskey. So I'm going to grab the Asian whiskey that I have back here. Great, 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 great. We'll, uh, we'll both try some of the um, Asian whiskeys. My friend Tomar, who's in Hamilton, very fancy show. Yes. Um, he is a good friend, so he sent me a bottle of whiskey. He <laughs> discovered this at a bar in Tulsa. Oh, nice. The bartender uh, recommended it to him, and it's a rice whiskey. Wow. Um, Tomar is gluten intolerant. So, uh, I mean, tell me this. I have heard that whiskey is, is gluten-free, um, although it's based in wheat and, and rye and grain, um, and that the distilling process takes the gluten out of the equation. I'm going to go with that. Um, but I also have friends who say I'm gluten intolerant and I can't do whiskey because it affects me in a negative way. Do you have any thoughts or feelings about that? Well, I think it all depends what the actual grain is that can affect you. There are some people that even say um, grains, in particular beers, can get to them. I mean, they say, well, when I drink this, I feel this way. Or why is it when I drink this? Like people, some people say tequila does this to me emotionally or, or whiskey may make me this or beer. So it all depends on what grain, you have to really figure out what grain it is that you have um, an intolerance yeah. to, um, uh -huh. or may affect you because kind of like anything, any recipe, it may be that element still carrying over into um, the drink. I wouldn't want to give any uh, too general of a suggestion, but I would just say, you know, if you know that you have an intolerance, just be careful and just kind of, you know, explore that. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. That said, yeah. that I am not uh, uh, intolerant to gluten. That's good. <laughs> That's good. What's the, what's That's the bottle? What's That's the great. my pal Omar is is yeah. uh, a gluten guy. Uh, he doesn't like the gluten, but anyway, he sent me this bottle. It's um, there we go, Fucano Distillery. Okay, yes, I've heard of this one. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. rice. It's a rice whiskey. Nice. Yeah. It'll be a massive departure from what we were just drinking. We've gone all over the world now, from yeah. New York to Kentucky to. Uh, Japan now, and I have the Nobushi, which is a uh, single malt, malted barley aged in a used bourbon barrel for about four years. Nice, pretty bottle too. Yeah, it's really lovely. Uh, fairly new. It's um, it's one of those that uh, the brand was working to find a, a way to put Japanese whiskey on the market that would be easier to find because, you know, Japanese whiskeys, and tell us down below if you've had Japanese whiskeys, what Japanese whiskeys you guys have tried mm -hmm. that you like, tweet back and tell us. 
because there's a lot of Japanese whiskeys um, that are tougher to find than they used to be, but this is one that you can find. Mm -hmm. What do you, what flavors do you get on that rice whiskey? Um, I mean, the the big note for me is cucumber. Cucumber, wow, okay. So really a fresh sort of zesty. Yep, and melon. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's really kind of soft and just melon yeah. and just, but so far away from, from the big, bold bourbon we just had. Right, right. Kind of situational might, uh, do you think it might work in a cocktail? Oh, I don't think I would. You would just put it by itself and. Yeah, I think it would get lost in a cocktail unless, right. it, unless it was, you know, sort of. Maybe try it. You could try it like a gin and tonic with with a cucumber, like with the Hendrix. Oh, nice. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you tried that. Maybe with tonic and a cucumber. I like that. I like that. Like, yeah. like you're at a spa. Every <laughs> spa Japanese whiskey. This particular one, the Nobushi. Um, I I get some of the melon fruit as well. Some of the yeah. uh, some of that nice fresh zest. Um, just very clean. Some real nice complexity for four years old. I have had it. With uh, Japanese food, I think it really complements the Japanese food nicely. And um, a slight touch of the smoke. This comes from two particular distilleries in Japan. They blend it together. They put it into those used bourbon barrels. So some of that bourbon characteristic, which is the sweetness from the barrel, also carries forward on it. Uh -huh. Man, some of those Japanese whiskeys are on point. I'll tell you what. I yeah. feel like they've figured out uh, like a good scotchy kind of... PD whiskey as yeah. well as anyone. They really have. A lot of them uh, really have that scotch note. And um, again, we used to see some of those that were $50 a piece or so, the Yamazaki or something 12 year old. And now it's, you know, several hundred. Um, I know it. I know it. Dollars. What do you think of that? I mean, you're obviously in a city where, uh, you know, some, so there is uh, some substantial markup on rare stuff. When you think about what you tried ten years ago or so, and then you go back into a store now, what what are your thoughts? I mean, I'm pretty lucky. New York seems to be a little bit of a red herring. Um, like, I feel like the the price point in New York is is raised a bit, but like in the suburbs of New York, because it's the same kind of shipping lanes. I feel like we keep a pretty steady uh, price point. Um, I mean. You know how in Scotland you can you you can buy a bottle of of uh, Laphroaig or Springbank here for cheaper than you can in the gift shop at the distilleries at Laphroaig or Springbank. Yep. Um, I feel like that may may well be the case in in New York as well. Like everyone's going to ship their booze to New York, right. so I think that we don't maybe get the the fluctuation or as much of a markup as some as some. That being said, I, I may be talking out of my ass. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just never know. I mean, you never know where you can stumble on uh, the right bottle you're looking for, and we try to always find uh, bottles that um, that are that are accessible that you can find of whiskeys that are newer and interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. They're still out there, but um, this you know this is a lot of fun trying these whiskeys with you, trying some really complex, interesting whiskeys with you, and uh, so yummy, so yummy. Yeah, yeah. What's the what's your latest um, like find? Something that we wouldn't know about? Something that you just tasted and it's it's obscure and nobody knows about, but you just thought this is a really quality thing that I love. What is my latest find? Well, I just tried the. Uh, it's a cold brew infusion of few spirits. They have a bourbon that is. Uh, they're from Illinois, not too far from Chicago. That square uh, bottle, I know a few, yeah. Yeah, a few. They have this cold brew uh, coffee, a uh, little bit of flavor there, infusion they're doing, and we're going to actually be interviewing the uh, founder of a few, uh, oh. Paul Hefko, on Tuesday night on the same show, so I just got to try that. Nice. That'll be fun. And, um, you know, we tried also not too long ago uh, one of the Peerless, um, the Peerless Rise uh, that had been finished in a used – absinthe barrel from a place called Copper and Kings. It's a limited edition in um, in Louisville as well. Copper and Kings makes brandy. They make some great absinthe. Um, and um, I tell you, just even their brandy is amazing. Are you a fan of brandy? Love brandy. In fact, I yeah. almost brought a bottle of brandy tonight to talk Ooh. about because I've been crazy about making sidecars. Like, uh, I had oh, a, nice. 
do you remember the night that you came to my show at Lincoln Center and we went to that place at the Mandarin Hotel? Yes, that was amazing. That was like a, a, a speakeasy of sorts. Yeah, yeah, it's like this hidden club inside yeah. the Mandarin. And and uh, and I and the guy. It's one of those places where the bartender comes over and says, "What are you feeling?" And you say, "I feel like, like, feel like, a, yeah. like a, <laughs> that's that reminds you of a hairbrush and right. and 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 snow peas, and they'll bring you a drink." Um, anyway, this guy, I, I always said, I just had a sidecar and and I kind of liked it. Can you give me a riff on that? And he brought me like a white chocolate sidecar was my drink. Oh right, right. Yeah, and yours was something that was like ended up in a like a little tiki glass or something. It was yeah, something very tropical. It, it was something special with McCallan, I think they had done or something oh, right. really wild and, and interesting. Friend Zach, who is the McCallan? Right. Yes, it was some yeah. really amazing cocktails. Yeah, yeah, those were were super super good. And I think we even had some sort of a a rare McCallan that night, if I'm not. That's sure. right. That because the 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 not the bartender, but the mixologist, who's right. somebody fancy. He he brought us over a truffle infused Macallan. Yeah, it was the truffle. <laughs> yeah, truffle infused Macallan twenty five is what it was. Right, <laughs> craziest thing ever. It's like a shot of it would have been a hundred, you know, two hundred dollars. And it was and, something pretty serious. It had yeah, that, yeah. that had a lot of complexity to it. That was right. Wild. No, that was cool. That was cool. So and for it, those of you watching, like um, and it, I've been making it recently. No, it was that was fun with you guys. And my friend Brandy is watching tonight. So hi, Brandy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the brandy you had uh, at your house? We said the brandy that you. Oh, it's bizarrely, it's it's a. My neighbor across the street. This is a random story. Her husband died ten years ago, and she is this loveliest lady. She and she, one day she came over and she said, "You know what? I don't drink at all. Do you want these?" And she brought me over like four bottles, uh, of amazing. Uh, booze, and wow. one of them was a bottle of Portuguese brandy, and I think it was called Twenty One. Was the brand? I looked it up, and it was like, yeah, it was a thing, but like not anything you can really find anymore. Anyway, so that's what I've been drinking. Something that's probably pretty rare and uh, delicious. Rare. Really nutty, really delicious and nutty, nutty, nutty. Wow. Yeah, and we're all kind of cracking into some things that have been sitting around. I mean, during the quarantine, I mean, there's things that. We typically wouldn't get into, and we're like, you know what? Let's let's open this up. And we thought about those occasions we're supposed to wait for. This seems like one of those occasions, right? Absolutely. It's like drink it now, man. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna crack the bottle now, if you're not gonna burn the fancy candle now, when are you gonna do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Any any words for those, uh, you know, those those who are watching that are, um, you know, maybe they're young in their theater career, film career. Uh, they're thinking about what their next move is going to be. Is it going to be New York, LA? Any just thoughts of um, encouragement for the younger, obviously plus 21 crowd, but the younger crowd watching? Uh, you know, it's going to sound cheesy, uh, but but it's real. And I actually yeah. mean it. Um, th the more true to yourself you can be in the profession of acting, the, the more authentic a product you will have. It sounds right. so cheesy, I know. And try to hear it for what it is. But if you try to, if you think I want to be like Tom Hanks because he's so great, and you try to emulate the things that Tom Hanks does, you end up being a, a, a knockoff version of Tom Hanks, and we already have a Tom Hanks. So the more, and and the thing, the thing we have mo going for us the most in our lives and on stage is that we are completely unique. And I honestly mean this: we are so unique, every single one of us. We all have a different face and a different voice and a different style. Tom likes to wear bow ties and it's amazing. Thank you. And, and, <laughs> and if I started a bourbon blog and I started wearing bow ties, people would say, he's just trying to be Tom Fisher. Because that, and that would be boring and redundant. So that being said, the best attribute that you have, the best quality that you have is being yourself and being confident in that. Because if you're able to just get into a part or into a show or on a stage or in an audition room, where you're just authentically, naturally relaxed and confidently you, that is unlike anything the casting director or the director has ever seen. And, and it's fascinating and interesting, no matter who you are or what you think your qualities are, your quirks are your qualities. You're, you're, you know, you, the things that you think are your stumbling blocks or that you might hate about yourself 
are your gifts. They are your superpowers. It sounds so cheesy and I get emotional talking about it because it took me so damn long to figure it out. But be true to yourself. That is cheesy and absolutely true. That's my advice to anybody who who want, not just in acting, but in life. But because if you're if you're confident with who you are, and if you if you are comfortable with who you are, that's magnetic and it's relaxing and it's energetic and it's real and and it will draw people and it will draw compliments and success to you and your path. And now I'm sounding very cheesy, as Peter Brown, our friend, would say, "Oogly boogly," but. Um, but no, I believe it. And so, so being true to yourself, that's my short answer. That's my long-winded answer of a, of a short phrase, be true to yourself. Well, I appreciate you sharing those words. I think that's so true. That's what you got to do. And you have uh, it's its so good to see you here and have a drink with you, my friend. Um, you too, man. Thanks for asking. We've had, so many, we've had so many good whiskeys in person, but to share a whiskey with you uh, tonight on camera has been awesome. Thanks for all those who join us. We're going to keep this up on all the channels you're watching. If you've watched this, you've liked it, share this, like it, retweet it. Let's, uh, since the peerless bourbon was your favorite, let's do a little toast before we leave here. We'll have a little. Will do. I am I'm happy to dive back with, in. with peerless. And we wish uh, you and all those uh, in there theater there well. And uh, there is. yes, tell us again the name of that, um, the name of that charity that we want to. Oh, well, as I got that in the shot. Yes, that's nice. very nice. If you're drinking a small batch peerless bourbon whiskey. Yes. Which Will approves of. Yes. Quite strenuously mm -hmm. tonight. Um, it's the Actors Fund. The Actors the Fund. Actors Fund. Uh, yep. It's an amazing organization, and, and it, it's not just helping, you know, actors who are out of work, um, but, but people who are really struggling, people in the hospital, um, people who really, really need it. And it's a great, um, you know, crew of people that that examine who needs it and gets it to the right spots, and it's, it's, a, it's a great place to, to help people. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for sharing some time with us on our quarantine drinking series. It's the one and only Will Swenson. Other one is Thank you, Thank you, brother. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> Thanks, brother. We'll see you cheers, soon. Man. All right. Cheers. Thanks so much, my friend. Cheers. Thank right, you. Well. <laughs> Good night. Thank you.